And now, for something completely machinima. Tracy Harwood. Um, so I've done a little bit of digging around and I've discovered. Ricky Grove. Fog comes in on little cat feet. <laughs> Phil Rice. This is the best film that I've seen all year and maybe ever. Damien Valentine. Use the machinima, Luke. Hello and welcome to And Now for Something Completely Machinima, the podcast about machinima, virtual production, real-time cinema, whatever you want to call it, and related technologies. Uh, my name is Phil Rice, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Tracy Harwood Hello. and Damian Valentine. Hello. Ricky is off skinny dipping, so we could <laughs> not keep his webcam turned on for that. Uh, but uh, he'll be back with us at our next episode. So this is our news omnibus episode. Um, I'm going to kick things off by reminding everyone of how to get in touch with us, because uh, while we we've we, you know we've got presence on x and and we we scour the web for this info but tips from you our listeners are more than welcome um because we can't possibly see everything going on out there that's important so you can reach us pretty much through the comments of anywhere that you're listening to this uh so uh, if you're if you're taking us in on youtube feel free to pop something in the comments there or uh, if you hear about us on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever else we're, we're spreading the word, that's fine as well. The surefire way to uh, get info to us would be through email, which is talk at completelymachinima.com. So we would welcome not only your feedback on the show, which we, we value greatly, uh, but also if you've got tips or things that you want to hear us talk about, this is the episode where we're not focused on specific films. We're going through what's happening out there. So I'm going to go ahead and start off real quick with just one thing that uh, happened fairly recently. Uh, about a month or so ago, maybe a little longer than that now, there was a new AI video uh, provider that kind of made its debut called... Uh, Vickle? I'm, I'm, what's that? Vickle? No, it's op it's the one by OpenAI. Uh, is it Soma? Or it starts with an S. Oh, yes. Yeah, because there's another yeah. one that's, that's AI music. Sora, there we go. Mm -hmm. Sona is the AI music one, which is, maybe we'll discuss that at some point when I've had a chance to, to play around with it. Um, but uh, Sora kind of made some waves when it when it splashed because they released a series of of uh, videos that that were generated by this uh, text to AI, uh, text to video generator, and uh, we we're aware that there's some pretty strong opinions on both sides about this whole technology and uh, you know where it's getting its source materials from is is a, a big point of controversy. Um, we don't really have an official podcast position on that i think there's there's some diversity of opinions even just in my own head on this not to mention between all of us so uh but it, it is it's noteworthy i think it's worth watching i think it's it's significant and something worth keeping an eye on so by us bringing it up like this we're not we're not promoting it or insisting that it's the way to go um but just that you know it's not insignificant it is something to watch it's it's going to play some kind of role uh in our creative world going forward so sora released this series of videos that were uh a, a kind of a whole order of magnitude better quality looking than than we've seen from the front runners of that text to video uh generated ai stuff like uh, Pika Labs and uh, Runway, and there's numerous others out there now. Um, but Sora, these were, uh, frankly, jaw dropping. Some of these videos that they were showing, a lot of the uh, glitchiness 
uh, was not as noticeable. Uh, and I think maybe the most noticeable thing was how long they could generate video and still keep a level of consistency to the output, uh, which that may not seem initially significant, but it is if you've ever experimented around with Runway or even Pika Labs that even after the, the reason that they let you render clips in about four seconds is because things start to kind of fall apart in terms of the integrity of the image after that point. And Sora seemed to have have overcome that. Now, it's not, I don't think it's still available to the public. Um, it seems like maybe they've opened it up to a select group of, of creators or beta testers, I think. Um, if, if I'm wrong on that, you guys will correct me. But but the videos were, well, to, to people who like that medium, they were very impressive. To people who don't, they were very alarming. Um, both reactions, I think, are understandable. What's significant is what has come out here in the last week or so from uh, the time when we're recording this. And that is that uh, it's come to light or a light has been shown on the fact that there's some pretty significant post-production work that was done on those clips that were put out there by OpenAI and by Sora. Was it somewhere in the fine print that there was post-production? Maybe, but they certainly didn't mind people looking at those videos and assuming that those just came straight out of the Sora mm. text-to-video engine without any alteration. And that is pretty clearly not the case. And not just in simple ways like color correction or, you know, maybe even, you know, reducing graininess or things like that. And we're not talking about that type of post-production. I'm talking about, you know, re replacing heads on on uh, on humanoid figures because it was distorting weirdly and uh, things of that sort where it's, I mean, significantly alter CGI altering of, of the image. Mm -hmm. And there's been various reactions to that. And, and frankly, the reactions to it are as various as the reactions to AI art itself. Uh, that there's some who are like, oh, you know, what's the big deal? We all do that. You know, it's kind of almost pretending, oh, we knew that, you know, we, we knew that was probably going on. I mean, come on, you know, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. And, and more importantly, I think, is that that the the company that released those videos uh they knew that we didn't know that uh and and i realize that it's maybe a a thorny subject to bring up you know honesty and integrity with regard to ai art when there's so many questions of honesty and integrity that are at the crew at the root of it you know, about how these things train and where they get their stuff from and is what they're doing theft. Um, I kind of, I tend to lean maybe more towards the camp of, okay, so if I'm a visual artist and I look at a whole bunch of different paintings from, from other artists and I get inspired by that and those become, let's say, my influences. And the same can be said in music, you know, I listen to, tons of Pink Floyd or Nine Inch Nails or Beethoven. And that tends to sculpt how I create. It's just natural. That's how we work. And to, I guess one case that could be made is all AI generative AI art is, is it's a computer that can do that a lot more efficiently than, our, than we can. It's looking at stuff and maybe even copying stuff in an imitative sort of way and whatnot. There's there's holes in that argument, I, I, I'll i fully uh, admit, but that's kind of, that's one side of the way of interpreting AI art. And the other is, it's just ripping stuff off and piecing it together. I think there's merits on both. Um, I don't think that question is necessarily settled yet. But regardless, I think it's a different type of honesty problem when a company is putting out there as promotional videos for a product that I would assume they're going to be charging for at some point. They're going to be 
commercializing, monetizing, making money from it. And they're they're letting this perception be that this is what our tool can do, which is a little bit different statement, I think, than this is what our tool can do after a professional CGI and post-production artist has altered the footage even further and turned it into something beautiful. I think that's important. Uh, even though, like I said, there is a lot of gray uh, with regard to, you know, the, the the honesty of the AI art venture itself. Um, but I do think it's an important distinction. I'm I'm curious if you guys paid any attention to that. What what your th- thoughts are on that? Well, if that's true, Phil, that's technically mis-selling, and that's <laughs> that's a... yeah. It, it might even be a violation of law. I don't <laughs> Absolutely, know. Absolutely, uh, yes. You know, maybe if... they buried something in the fine print, maybe to say that these things were tweaked, but nobody noticed that. And yeah. kind of wonder, that, isn't it? That they were glad no one noticed it. I don't know. Damien, you say you were saying yes, yeah, false advertising or something. Absolutely, like. it's, right? It's, 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 yeah. it's mis-selling. It's sale of goods, and mind you, you know, you talk about buyer beware and all that sort of stuff. Don't know what the American legal position is on on mis-selling, but here it is a it it's wrong. It's a pretty but, serious thing. Yeah, absolutely, pretty serious thing. Um, right. If that's what it is, if if um, you know, if it's being portrayed as one thing, there's a price on that one thing, and it turns out that that's not how it's done, and that's not what it's capable of doing. Then that's mis-selling. Yeah, I think it's a fairly yeah. s- cut and I have to cut admit, and dry I thing. I didn't look too closely at this particular instance, but I saw the the headline in our notes here, and I thought, yeah, that doesn't sound uh, yeah too uh, ethical there. It's, well, it's not it's, just you know unethical; it's wrong. Yeah, it's but, uh, yeah. And it breaks uh, the, you know, Hello. yes, fundamentally. But but I have to say, I I have entirely skipped that episode because unfortunately I was away, so I missed all of the fallout on it. I saw that you meant you'd sort of seen it, um, but I haven't actually had a chance to look at what's okay. Going on. Well, and we can, what, and we can, also, what are we they can saying? dig into that further later? Yeah, yeah. What are they saying in response to the the furore around it? Have they actually commented on it? I'm not certain about that. I'm not certain that there has been an official response yet. Because that's what I would surprising. Because yeah. yeah. Well, Definitely. maybe they know they've been caught and they just don't want to say anything. Well, well you would think even if that was the case, someone would come out and justify the decision. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the uh, question is, it, how have they been caught? That's the. I mean, what's the process for uncovering that kind of thing? The the uh, the story that. Um, that called it to my attention the person had actual source video clips of what the ai rendered footage was before the adjustments were made and then what it was after now how they obtained those i don't know is it a whistleblower kind of thing is it something else i i honestly don't know or so it may have been fake? a dumb idea for me to bring up when i haven't haven't dug into it yet but or, or uh, it's fairly videos? new or are they fake videos that then somebody is trying to claim I don't know. You see, there's right. such a lot Could of missing. Could it be a, a competitor in in bad faith? Yeah, trying I mean, to, there is yeah. such an awful lot of misinformation. I think it's definitely if you've got something like this, I think it's my advice would be to um, check it out. Okay. Properly, um, but if they have done that, I mean, what a stupid thing to do. Really. Yeah. Well, you think we'll dig some more into that. <laughs> if it was a competitor, they would be very quick to be able to say, actually, no, this is genuine. But we'll produce another clip and we'll show you how we did it. And you can Yeah, see that's it. the thing is which of those which of those levels of dishonesty is the more yeah. corporate risky? Yeah. Having having issued the video under false pretenses or fabricating video to make it look like someone did. I mean, good <laughs> grief. There's that's either way, that's just filthy. Yeah. It, so it, it, but it, I don't think we're dealing with a with a, an exactly uh I was going to say clean slate, but you know what I mean. I don't think we're doing... Nobody's squeaky clean in this, are they? Yeah, it no. makes you wonder, uh-huh. you know, if 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 the whole endeavor of this uh, was, you know, regardless of where you end up falling on, on AI art, it seems like that because the technology was moving so quickly that this was kind of mo- rushed into a bit pretty quickly before these... Kind of like... 
I think analogous to maybe some of the the stuff related to stem cell research in medicine, right? That this technology is there and it's so promising. And there are some ethical questions around stem cells and where they're harvested from and all that stuff. And and there was this propulsion by the promise of the technology that just propelled people forward before answering those things. And then, yeah, now you're in a weird place with it. And I think there's there's something to be said similarly with, with AI art, that there's some real ethical questions about uh, you know, mining the output of other artists without their consent, uh, and just moving forward with it, and and the, the, under the banner of well, it, because we can. Yeah, and that's not really a good enough reason. But but uh, you know what? I mean, it's really it's kind of interesting that you're talking about the same company because I picked up another thing that that well, well I can share with you now. But this is an this is also a Microsoft um, piece of work that has been done, and and I picked up picked it up because it's interesting in how that they how they've dealt with it. And of course, Microsoft are in bed with OpenAI, um, so there is a kind of a connection there. But the bit that I was going to um, tell you about is this um, tool that they've called uh, VASA One Vasa One. And it's a tool that will create lifelike audio driven talking faces using generative AI. And it's not out in the, in the world. Um, and they currently have no plans um, to release it. it. It is simply a, 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 a development that they have made with, with the technology um, to illustrate that this is possible. And they've released a research paper on it um, which is, I mean, most of these guys do this. They they release a research paper long before it becomes a product, if you like. Um, but the bit that I was going to say before you brought this Sora thing up was um, the fact that they said they have no plans to release it and that the ex image examples that they've included in this paper are, are purely illustrative and have not, um, you know, do not represent any real person, if you like. Uh, I kind of was going to going to raise the, the point. Well, I wonder how long they will resist the temptation of not putting it out in the world. Now, I'll share the link to that paper with you. But it's really interesting that you're saying, well, they put something else out <laughs> under false pretenses. They mm. or open AI. And yet on another tool set, they're not prepared to do it. This I don't know this. I, the these companies are vast. I don't know, you know, under what, you know, what ethical principles they, you know, they review what it is they're doing, whether there is consistency in that pro in, in that approach. I get the feeling there isn't. Um, I get, you know, one one group of folks does one thing, and another group of folks does another. Um, but certainly in this particular tool set that I'm talking about, they they are withholding it, and clearly they're withholding it because of the very significant implications from the potential for this kind of tool to get in uh, into the hands of bad actors, I would assume. <laughs> now, either way, with your story, if it's, you know, if they really have manipulated it to make it look like it does better than it has, or somebody's trying to undermine it, you know, there's an element of bad action there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Same companies though. That's the bit, that, you know, that kind of. Um, what you know? What what can you say? I just uh, you know, it's moving not just too fast for us as consumers of, of this stuff, but for them as companies working with it. I mean, what more can you say? Yeah, I I kind of, I don't know. It, there's a there's a fun element to AI that I really would love to be able to just enjoy guilt-free you know yeah seeing seeing uh you, you know uh, seeing a, a instagram video of michael jackson but with with arnold schwarzenegger's voice singing I know, that was mirror. fabulous a willow deeply sky somebody's broken heart and a washed out tree <laughs> oh yeah there's a whole thing on instagram a whole set of reels where 
it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice doing either replacing someone else's voice or doing sound effects for like there's one that's it's a video of of dirt bikes going over desert dunes and all of the engine sounds are Arnold (laughs) 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 the whole thing oh it's like okay I love that but uh, like every time I will I will you know want to go enjoy something like that it's like this whole looming sense of oh my god man is is this whole thing you know wrong is it okay wow. yeah it's a weird time it's it's mm. there isn't it um yeah i mean did you did you see the uh, the viggle image generator uh, that's what i thought you were going to tell us about actually the viggle one you know that do you, i mean this has been m- meme Meme supremo, I think, uh, across the across the internet, and again over the last couple of weeks, this uh. is the Joker, with you know, so it, this is this guy standing in for Lil Yachty, is it the 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 rap singer? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, it this, has been memed all just crazy, yeah. Absolutely crackers, this one. Um, it's Discord. You go onto Discord and you can replace any character with another character in any video and it's relatively straightforward to do it there's a bunch of video tutorials on on how to do it you kind of have to tidy it up a bit with another ai to get the clothing to move a little bit but it's it's basically a style transfer um you know a, 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 an approach to style transfer between videos which I think is, is is kind of really cool. So, yeah, another one. Biggle AI, that one's called. I thought that's the one you were going to talk about because that's the one that everybody is um, kind of uh, highlighting at the moment. Then there's another, I mean, I, I've got a few AI things. Yeah, go ahead. With you. Well, Google DeepMind has created a new AI model called Genie. Oh, or well, yes, I think it's called Genie, that can create playable worlds in the style of 2D animation platforms using an image as a prompt or a sketch or a text description. And there's actually a, a quite why they've released it this way, I don't know, but there's a there's a Twitter thread about it that's worth taking a look at. Um, so you've kind of got, a, um, you know, a playable world environment from a text prompt now. I mean, that's hmm. just astonishing. Then Stability AI has introduced its stable audio 2.0 model um, that uh, enables high quality full tracks with musical structure of up to three minutes long from a single text prompt. I mean, that's also astonishing. Amazing. <laughs> Excuse me. But according to some, it's not quite as good as Suno. Um that's the one I was trying to think of earlier. Suno, yeah, yeah, Suno. yeah, yeah. Well, it's really interesting. Somebody, um, one of my colleagues at work, um, this last few days created a theme tune for my research institute um, using Chat GPT to generate the lyrics and Suno to to generate the uh, the, <laughs> the sound, and it's it's pretty good, I have to say. I didn't know we were so well thought of for by the internet, but clearly we are. Um, so, you know, my Institute of Creative Technologies has now got its first uh, signature tune, <laughs> which hmm. is great. Um, from Suno, that was primarily. primarily. Then um, Musk has announced that a Grok 1.5 vision, which, as I understand it, he aims to connect the digital and physical worlds with this kind of multimodal model. Um as, as I understand it, it's about to be released sort of imminently, so probably by the next month. Um, next month's news episode, we'll be able to talk about that in more detail. Um, and I can share a link with you in the meantime how it compares to some of the other generative AI models that are multimodal as well. Um, and what else did I want to share with you? Yeah, one more on the generative AIs. Um, I don't know if this is a sort of thing that you might be interested in. I kind of find these things interesting because they remind you just how far the technology has come in a in a longer period of time frame than you might imagine but i did find a really interesting for me um video uh by art of the problem about the history of the development of generative ai and it's actually a documentary there's um 
you know, some interviews with some uh, key scientists in the development of, of generative AI, including some sort of dead ends that they reached in the in the development process. Um, it's about 30 minutes long, but it's kind of worth watching if you're interested in where does it come from? Why does it do what it does? That kind of thing. Um, and that's um, a little um, YouTube video that uh, I'll put a link on the show notes for as well. But that's it on the on the generative AI updates that I've got. Um, I mean, you know, I suppose each week that goes past each month that we talk about it, there's a load more stuff that kind of happens that we, you know, the, the 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 playing field becomes a little more clear in terms right. of, you know, how is how are how are the texts evolving? What are the key issues that are emerging around them, and how are they be being used by bad actors? And what do you need to look out for? Because all of that is what we are witnessing in kind of real time, and we're having to navigate that. Actually, navigate it as creators, but also reviewers in the in the podcast too, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know obviously this AI stuff is is filtering into the work that we're seeing in ways that are not so clear um to many folks i think um right it's it's kind of an interesting one um i've got some other updates or damien do you want to have a go with your updates because i know you've got some great ones um well yeah i've got uh two things i want to talk about and a a question i'm going to ask both of you uh so first off there's uh a new plugin or it's a thing for uh, iclone and it's for generating buildings and I haven't tried it out yet. There's a free trial version, and then there's you have to pay for it if you want to actually use it um, beyond the trial period. And it's kind of like building blocks, where you have these, you build your buildings with big, they're not like Lego bricks where you have to build each brick individually, but they're big blocks that make sections of the building. You can choose the shape of it, how high it's going to be, um, and you can cut bits out so you, you're not just having a square shape and it goes up high or it gets very wide or anything like that. You can do all kinds of um, interesting shapes with it. And then once you've got the shape set, you can then place windows and doors. Um, uh, there was um, on the top, you can put different types of roof, roofing and banisters for um, the railings for, uh, you know, if you've got any kind of balcony. Uh, and it looks like it's a very fascinating tool. And you can also change like the texture of the walls. Uh, I think this is going to be a very useful uh, new feature for iClone because you can build your city or whatever structures you want and you can make it unique to your film very easily without necessarily having to learn how to do 3D modeling to create the, the same kind of unique structure that you want. Um, at the moment, it's kind of a European style um, construction set. I don't know if there's plans for more styles to be added or if they're going to rely on the community to build them um, or how easy it is to, to bring in your own. But um, I thought it was worth uh, mentioning. There's some videos to, on the, the Real Vision website to show off how it works. Uh, I believe yeah. that they've I believe that they've already released one, uh, at least one content uh, add-on pack right. for this. So that is probably going to be the model going okay. forward. I mean, hopefully there there will be a way for uh, for users themselves to to do that if they want to put the time in for that. But I think I think there's going to be some different architectural styles that you can purchase as add on packs for this. That, that makes sense. It seems consistent with with uh, with the way that they've they've done other types of content. It yeah. does look very interesting. Um, it seems like years ago they would release for like city building for example they would release a content pack that had a lot of modular components but they were all fixed in nature and you could you could kind of interlock them together almost like legos and build some pretty limited types of sets um and this is this to me feels like uh with it being procedurally generated it's it's going to be so much more flexible and uh so many more possibilities can emerge uh so it it does look very interesting um i'm not sure what the i'm trying to find what the the pricing is on it they've got a early bird special 
Okay, so the yeah the the early bird special for the plugin itself is one forty nine. I don't know if that's a member price or if that's the the list price is one ninety nine, and then they have the first pack that they released that I mentioned is called the French Style Pack. Yeah, and they're offering that offering that with a bundle for an extra fifty bucks. So it's not see- cheap, but if you were but I mean. If you think about things in terms of, you know, money is essentially a representation of a creator's time, Mm. right? Mm. Whether you're hiring someone to do work for you, or if you're spending the time to do it yourself, that that's money you could spend doing something else. And I mean, that's, that's supposed to be the whole idea behind money in the first place, right? Yeah. Is, is it's a physical uh, representation of of the value of of time. So, if you're going to be doing a lot of building like this, then then that's probably a pretty reasonable price. If you're not, then that's 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 pretty steep. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you're just doing one scene, it's probably not worth doing it. But if you're going right. to do lots of city scenes in your projects, that right. might be worth looking into. One thing about it, I'm curious about. And maybe when one of us gets to test it out, we can report back to people on this. But you know, a lot of a lot of people that are using iClone because of the advanced rendering possibilities that that you can do by bringing your project over into either Unreal or into NVIDIA Omniverse. Um, you know, s- some types of assets, there's a, there's a question mark there sometimes of how well they're going to transmit over to those third-party platforms. So I'm I'm curious about I would assume that anything procedurally generated is going to have the the prop is going to end up having a uh, an, ex, an extended license that lets you export to those other places. But I I don't have any way to know that for sure yet. We'll have to we'll have to play with that and see. There's um, they've changed their export license setup, so in theory, all content now can be exported. In practice, that doesn't work because I've had <laughs> issues mm-hmm. uh, with some of the clothing content packs um, and characters uh, saying that you know we, you don't have the license for it when you're trying to do it. And I, I have contacted them um, and I haven't had a full reply yet. Uh, I got a reply with some questions which I've answered, and I'm, I'm waiting to hear back. That's got nothing to do with this particular plugin. It's just about right. some clothing. Content. Well, that's a good direction for them to be heading in for sure, because it 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 was pretty pretty complicated waters to navigate for. Yeah. Um, so any step in that direction is good. Let's hope they keep moving things that way. I hope so. Uh, well, hopefully by next time we record, I'll uh, have some more answers about that one. Probably the mystery behind that of how to solve that, uh, something behind the scenes that's going on has got to be figuring out how to make sure that the the artists who create the content are satisfied with the compensation that they'll get hmm. for that extra usage. You know, that's got to be what that's got to be part of the part of the challenge of it. Because I, I I believe that if I remember right, it used to be that for the extended license, you're paying more for it, and so then the artist is getting compensated more as well. Yeah. So if they figured that out and were and were able to apply that across their creator network for people populating their content store, that's going to be a big part of it. Well, these are actually official content packs that I was having right. Yeah, with. a little different there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm not quite sure what, what's going on there, but hopefully we can get some answers there. Good. All right. So the next thing I tried, we talked about it last month, uh, the the Blockbuster Inc. demo. Well, it's not called the demo. It's called the uh, Prologue edition. Prologue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So I tried it out, and there is a demo which I have installed as well, which I got from the when they released it on Steam years ago. The demo is very different from the, the Prologue Edition. The demo is a much earlier version, so I don't know if it's still available to download, but don't get that because it's... De- <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, the, the Prologue Edition, you, you load it up, and you can start a new game, and it asks you if you want to do the tutorial. So the first time I ran through it, I did that. And it's very much like the movies. It's a business simulation game, and it teaches you how to do all the business side of the things like hire your staff, build the, you know, build yeah, offices yeah. for the, the writers and the producers and the maintenance team and, you know, all of that stuff. And then it gets kind of into the filmmaking. Um, is there alcoholism? 
Because that was a big part of the movie's uh, <laughs> simulation was managing the drunks. I think that's going to be in the game. I didn't get far enough in it to, to find out. I mean, it's Hollywood, so yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> um, so it teaches you basically everything you need to know. And then I loaded up again over the weekend and just played the game itself. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a, a free mode like the movies did where you, you just get everything. Um, so this pre preload edition, it gives you the, uh, I think it's about the, the 1930s or the 40s or some, some early parts of Hollywood history to play around with. And you can choose... What kind of when you start to set up the game, you choose what kind of movies your studio is going to produce, and there's a couple of different options. Now I went with action and mystery, uh, and then you, there's themes as well to go alongside that. So I went with vampire and cyberpunk just to see what would happen. <laughs> and vampire what cyberpunk movie movie in the 1930s. Wow, yeah, yes. <laughs> sounds like a horror hammer. Um, hammer so horror. These, <laughs> so Metropolis, basically. Yeah. yeah. So what these options do is they give you the base, the starting content that you have. So that's costumes for your actors um, and the decorations for your set uh, and stuff like that. And so I built up the studio with the offices for the, you know, the, the production team, and then you can build a set. Now in the movies, the sets are static things. You can choose which one you want. Like there's a starship bridge, there's an office, uh, there's a school corridor, um, there's a, I, I can't remember all of them. It's a long time ago. But you, you place that and that's what you get. And there's a couple of... Each set has its built-in set of animations that you can choose. So, so if you've got the Starship Bridge, they're all Starship-like things, like Captain in the Seat and the, the crew's being flown around, thrown around the room and stuff like that. But you won't get those options if you're in the corridor, you know, the school corridor or anything like that. Uh, and you won't get the school corridor options on the Starship Bridge. Whereas this... You build the set and it's basically a square and th there's a theme to it. So I built the cyberpunk one. So it looks like a outside building, graffiti on the walls and some high tech stuff. But other than that, it's basically blank. And then what you can do is you can decorate it with props. So I put um, some signs up on the wall, you know, some neon signs and um, this big, futuristic door on one of the walls and a big air conditioning unit, which I'm sure they didn't have in the 1930s, but <laughs> you can still build it there anyway. Um, and then you can place, you can set what you want to film there. Um, so I had this, the movie I had was five scenes, four or five scenes. And I did various different fight sequences so that place the characters and you set what animation that they're going to perform. But when you actually place them, you can place them anywhere on the set. You're not limited to very specific locations like you were with the movies. So you do that. Uh, you can pick what costumes they're going to wear. And then you set what animations they're going to be. And there can be any combination you want. So I had one where one character had a sword and was doing this acrobatic stunt thing through the air. And the other character was just kind of standing there and kind of stepped backwards or something, but not in a way that would make sense with the scene because I wanted to see if you could do random stuff like that. Um, and then you place where the camera is going to be and how you can set what kind of camera movement is going to be. I don't think you can control the camera manually. It's more like it's going to point at this character and then you can say if you want it to switch between characters or if you just want it to focus on that one or if you just want it to be remain static. And there's various zoom options and focus options and height and uh, stuff like that, which um, I didn't play around too much with that, but it was there. And of course, with this being set in the 1930s from when I started, it's all black and white. And it's very grainy. So the, the camera is authentic to the time. And I imagine when the, as you play through the game, more advanced camera technology is going to become available. So you, you'll get um, color and less grain and um what you know more modern uh technology that you'd expect um so you, you do that and then you start production the 
all the characters and the game they go around making the movie so that the actors get on stage the camera crew's there the director's there and you just let it run and then a couple of minutes later you've got your movie and you can watch it um and obviously this test video was terrible <laughs> but you know i wasn't expecting to do anything great with it how are you going to share uh, it with us i i don't know how to do that yet oh I do know that it's possible because I looked and I've seen people sharing their videos on TikTok, but I don't know how they did it because there's no button to say export or anything like that. Um, really? Yeah. So I don't know how they huh. did it. It must be saved somewhere and I haven't found it. I tried going on to um, the Steam uh, dis discussion page to see if anyone said it, but um, uh, that wasn't covered so there's got to be a way to do it i just don't know how to do it yet but maybe it's sure they were capturing it with uh, obs or something and they just cut it yeah maybe so well um, possibly yeah or maybe they've got an advanced copy of the game and, and they're releasing stuff that's not necessarily in this prologue edition of the, the game um so it made me want to dig out the movies again and play around with that mm -hmm. because obviously this is just a, a, a demo version and very limited of content um because I remember I enjoyed playing the movies, I enjoyed playing the simulation part of it as well as making movies. Uh <laughs> so it brought back a lot of good memories of that. Now, some of the things I noticed with this, when you build a set, there's this set construction tool, you can save them and you can share them with other people, including oh. on the Steam Workshop. It's got Steam Workshop support for mods. Um at the moment it's just the sets as far as I can see. That's tell. a neat feature. Yeah. Mm. But I believe when the full game is released, other mods options are going to be available, like costumes and uh, I, I don't know what else they're going to put in. Oh, that's going yeah. to build we'll its see. own economy then, yeah? yeah? Yeah. And of course, the good thing about Steam Workshop is all the content is free. So you just go on there, you find what you want, and you download oh. it into the game. You just press the subscribe button, it, the game will automatically download and add it to itself. Uh, so you know, that makes it very easy. Very mm. handy. Yeah. So I'm very intrigued by this game. Um, I'm, I expect I'll grab it when it gets released next month in uh, June. Uh, because uh, I really enjoyed the movies and I'm interested in playing this uh, spiritual successor to it. And I do really hope there's a way to export movies because I think there's a lot of potential there. For sure. It sounds really... Yeah, they're sounds... almost, almost certainly it has to be in the main game. Yeah. yeah. Perfect for machinima, really. For, for um, film sharing. Yeah. And it's kind of got a cartoony style like the movies did, but not, not ex the movies was a little bit over the top of the exaggeration like The Sims was, not quite as much as The Sims. But from what I've seen here, the, I think there's options for that. But if you want to do something a little bit more serious, you've got those animations there as well. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll see Neat. what happens. Yeah. Well, I've got some game up updates that I, I wanted to share with you. Um. Do you remember when we were talking with Ricky about um, the, uh, you know, the, the difference between game machinima and uh, what, what's going on with Unreal and what have you? Well, some of these things that I'm going to share with you now kind of tap into what I was talking about in relation to what the future of Unreal might actually be. Um, probably come back to that when I've um, gone through all the different points, if you like. The first one I wanted to share with you is um, a new Jaws experience, which is um, being uh, created for Roblox. Uh, it's called Jaws Infested Waters. Now, it's a survival game that's been developed by Orange Comet and Universal Products and Experience. And it and it actually, you know, it's very cartoony, um, but it's very reminiscent of the uh, original um, film, of course. And I'd be really interested to see what... what folks kind of do with that because you know it's a, it's a it's as i just said it's a classic kind of film turned into a game hmm. well i don't know it's jaws what can you do with it they're going people are going to get eaten aren't they that's but maybe maybe there'll be some uh, interesting takes on that but i really want to see what comes out of that um for the reasons that we were talking about then um you must have heard of pal world that was um, a kind of a spiritual successor to um, Pokemon uh, that, that was released. Well, um, I'm not sure if we 
we actually have highlighted this one in our other news updates. Um, I've been waiting to see for some see see if there are some interesting machinimas come out with with it. I haven't honestly seen anything um, that I would call interesting as such. <laughs> However, um, JT Music have created a rap. Um, and you know we we covered a JT Music uh, video last month, and we with the Hell Hell Davis two one, and we we basically sort of said, well, you know, if you ever want to find out about what a new game is all about, have a look at a JT Music rap. Well, they've really nailed this one because you know they've highlighted in this rap all the kind of key aspects to do with how you are basically the uh, part of the production cycle for the game. And how it's a grind <laughs> to play it, which probably explains why there aren't an awful lot of machinima um, being made with it just yet. But um, I think it's an interesting uh, machinima um, that JT Music have put out about it. Um, so I, I still wait with bated breath as to what comes out of that one. You must have seen the GTA um, 6 trailer. Oh, yes. You, you must have seen that, yeah. Inspired, of course, by, um, well... It's a Florida location, yes. Beaches, wetlands, and mud bogs. Do you have mud bogs there, Phil? <laughs> uh yeah. I mean, you know, in in the Everglades itself, uh, it's it's a swamp. We're all living on a swamp over here, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, as far as I can tell, there's still no date for its actual release. Um, another twenty twenty five one. Um, Ish. Do you think? Do you think it's later? Do you? I think twenty six. I think it's, I more. think they're gonna they're uh, gonna wait until this thing is spectacular. Yeah. Do yeah. you reckon? Mm, interesting. I, I think that's 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 they they caught a lot of flack for the remastered releases that they did of the earlier GTA games. Do you remember that? Or the GTA is. three and they and they caught a lot of of flack for that. Of, of there were a lot of bugs and and. Mm -hmm. Stuff didn't translate real well, and it felt rushed. I think they heard that. Interesting. I do, and I I don't think they're going to make that mistake with GTA 6. I mean, they didn't with the re release of the trailer. There was speculation for six to eight months of the GTA 6 trailers right around the corner. All this pressure, all this public pressure, to, and they didn't give into it. They released it when they were ready to. Yeah. So, yeah, I th I think that's probably... I mean, they're they're sitting in a really nice position, mm. um, and they've done a fantastic job, I think, of keeping the community around GTA Five alive for this long. They're still releasing uh, GTA Online like content and events and things. They're still doing that, yeah. Um, and I think that's how they keep uh, the fan base interested and alive, and and. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't think there's going to be any rush to get this out. Um, it won't be soon enough for anybody that wants to play it, of course. But uh, no, I think they'll wait. And I think it's going to... I don't think they're on the down downhill part of their slope yet at all. I think mm -hmm. I got every reason to think that the they're still on their way up in terms of getting better in their and, games. So Because Machinima has been such a big thing for GTA V... I don't know what, what you think, but I, I'm just curious to see how the machinima community of creators will make the switch to six because they're very wedded into five, aren't they? I mean, we've been looking at GTA five machinima for, my God, so long. As long yes, as since I... we started. Yeah. Well, I mean, on the show, yes, but I mean. <laughs> yeah, even before that. Yeah, going back, well, like... there was a lot of there was a lot of GTA Four Machinima activity before Five came out, oh, and okay. it had a yeah. similar tool set. But the GTA Five, um, the Rockstar editor and director mode and all that is way more advanced in Five than it was in Four. Yeah, so it it really didn't it didn't uh, it didn't require a lot of effort for people to make the move. And I I would suspect that they're going to uh add additional features uh That's to it. those tools yeah i th i th i think there's i mean they'd be stupid not to frankly there's it's mm -hmm. it's it's such an important way uh, it's it's the best advertising that they've ever had 
is what oh, sure. they let their users do with that game. I mean, that's that's kept it on the on the tips of our tongues and on conversations and in front of people's eyes for over a decade. That's an amazing achievement. Amazing. So, Indeed. Yeah. 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 And well, co especially considering that it's not an open world game, you know, it's one thing if you look at a, a success story like Minecraft and yeah, they're adding more content to the game each year, they add more and, and all that, but essentially it's still just a sandbox, but because the possibilities are infinite, you can see how, okay, well, you, you can always have a new experience in that game. And with GTA five, okay. The online component, there's some randomness to it. There's a whole there's a whole role-playing uh, phenomenon that has come up in GTA V that was never part of the mm. intention for the game or the out-of-the-box capabilities of the game, but people are just using it that way. And and they'll basically, and people will live stream their experience or they'll just go and just do it for entertainment. And you just go in and you take on a literally a role and just do stuff. And like, it could be something as as banal as I'm, I'm going to be a taxi driver and accept fares and transport players where they need to go. And you'll see it. And you would think <laughs> that that would just devolve into, you know, this Dionysian madness. It doesn't typically, I'm sure there are people out there who, who <laughs> grief, right. Who turn it into that. But the videos that I've seen, I mean, just people just, they're using it as an RPG in this weird way. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's, uh, uh, I just, yeah, I, I hope that they do keep the quality level up and I, I think they've got every incentive to do so. I think they know all eyes are on them yeah. uh, for this. There's tons of anticipation. Uh, the Florida thing is, uh, th they've never done a Florida setting, have they? Not to my uh, Well, I guess Miami. Miami. my city is Miami technically, yeah. right? But this yeah. is this is extending out mm. quite a bit. This is you know the Everglades is not Miami. That's that's mm. that's out that's outskirts. So the, the, it's a larger map again. Um, Leonida and and frankly, and I say this as a Floridian, but Florida, it, GTA has always been from the very first top-down scroller game has always been uh, heavily laced with satire. Uh, political satire. Um, and I mean, Florida is just easy, an easy target, you know, with the whole Florida man phenomenon and all that stuff. And just, I mean, it, you, you guys may not be uh, exposed to quite as much talk about that, but here in the States, yeah, Florida's got a reputation uh, for being just a little bit crazy. Um, as hey. someone living here, I can tell you, it's not all like that, but that is the rep. That is the reputation. And that's the stories that make the headlines is, you know, someone literally behaving like a zombie and trying to eat someone. Oh. Uh, the crazy drugs that are out there now and, and all of that. And Florida gets a little taste of all that stuff. Florida's got high end. It's got some of the wealthiest people in the entire country. And it's got the absolute reddest of the rednecks as well. All in one place. You know, a, a trailer park right down the road from, you know, mansions. So yeah, there's lots of, lots of just fun possibilities there. So, uh, you know, that, that frankly in like vice city, Miami itself doesn't capture all that. You got to go out into the, into the rural and it looks like that they're, they're going to enable the player to do that. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. And I'm, I, I'm, a stone's throw from Miami. Like I live right on the other side of the Everglades. So uh, I'm particularly interested in this title, yeah. probably in a similar way to GTA five was probably particularly exciting for Ricky being from LA. And that's what it's based on with GTA four. I think GTA four is more, more based on New York. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's kind of, it's kind of exciting that element of it. So Ooh, I wonder it's not necessarily going to be realistic, but it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. So seven, seven. Where will seven be? That I don't know. That I don't mm. know. Interesting. Maybe, maybe back to New York. But I mean, that's yeah. that's years away. So uh, yeah, probably beyond our lifetimes. <laughs> the rate they're going on. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyway, so the next one I wanted to talk about. So this one, Marvel has also posted a game trailer. Um, or is it a film trailer? Uh, for uh, a game called 1943 Rise of Hydra. It's a story world. Can I just um, say it's getting harder and harder to tell? Indeed. That was my point. Like, I mean, it's and to the point where it's kind of frustrating. You got three three types of trailers out there now. Yeah. Legitimate movie trailers, game trailers that you can, if you're not watching closely enough, you can easily mistake for movie trailers. Like and then one. you've got fake trailers. Yes. Where nothing exists. There's nothing that can make you feel more stupid than <laughs> falling for a fake trailer. I actually fell for a fake trailer for I Am Legend 2. <laughs> I Am Legend is the the Will Smith adaptation of, I think originally that movie was Omega Man with Charlton Heston. Uh, you know, it's the end of the world and there's a virus and whatever. Everyone dies at the end. Of I Am Legend. But I saw, oh my gosh, look, I Am Legend 2. And there's Will Smith. And I started watching it. My wife is the one who said, didn't everybody die? And I'm just watching it. And I can just feel my facial features just sagging just as I'm starting to get angry. It's like, I can't believe I fell for this. Yeah. Well, there you go. So, but yeah, the game trailers, sometimes it's it's like, you cer you certainly can't tell from the thumbnails. And sometimes it takes a, a little bit into the trailer itself to to catch whether or not, okay, is this a 3D rendered environment or is this a movie? Well, God so, knows what this one's going to be because... Yeah, I don't know. I honestly well, don't know. I haven't it, watched it yet, so I don't know. No, but you you should because this is this is exactly what I was talking about on the Unreal, you know, what are they trying to do here, create all these kind of ludic worlds. Well, this is this is exactly that. Yeah. and And it's being made in Unreal Engine. Um, it's uh, it's being made by a company called Skydance New Media and Marvel Games, obviously. Um, and the idea is that there's this ensemble of uh, of heroes um, who must overcome their differences and collaborate to confront their con common enemy. Uh, and this one is also scheduled to be released in 2025, hmm. uh, which you know if it's going to compete with GTA Six and Others, you know, I mean, well, well, I guess we'll see how successful right. that will be. Um, I tend to think, you know, because the, just as the just as you have just said, you cannot pick up that this is a game from the trailer at all. It just looks like another Marvel movie. Um, and my guess is because it's a film studio that's working with a an experienced kind of company, these guys have got a little bit of a a learning curve, I think, to go through to figure out how IP for films can work in a gameplay context. And then on top of that, you've got to then think about, well, what does that mean for those that might then appropriate that content to create machinima? Because that will happen. You know, you can't put a game out and then expect, you know, either Let's Plays not to be put up on on the channel all that content to be turned into new story um ex, you know new, new stories from machinima creators and i don't see any of the groundwork being laid for that side of what it is they're trying to do in terms of just you know mixing these two genres of um uh, of entertainment if you like um so I think the IP side of things is going to be really interesting once these things kind of get going. But interestingly, with this particular one, I don't know if you saw uh, the game development um, uh, developer conference a couple of weeks back. Um, at that, Kim Library, uh, who is the chief technology officer, sorry, chief, um, yeah, chief technology officer for, um, for Epic Games, he was demoing Unreal Engine 5.4, uh, with this particular content, uh, Rise of the Hydra, okay. um, actually showcasing it at, at that event. And the the fidelity of the characters and the assets 
that were on that um, screen that you were you were looking at in that conference, they were absolutely astonishing because obviously 5.4, uh, you know, it's got a bunch of new uh, tools within it, including various kind of physics tools. So you guys were talking earlier about, um, you know, how do you create uh, um, physics properties for things really mm -hmm, quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, well, in 5.4, they're built in. You don't need to. It's another free tool set, and it's there, and it's ready to rock. Wow. Um, so 5.4 looks to me like it's pretty astonishing. Um, but like I said, it's a, it's a film in a game engine, and gameplay, game mechanics are going to clearly come into into force in this sort of thing. This is exactly what Unreal had in in their mind when they started to go down this route, I think. This is exactly what they were talking about. So it's a really interesting um, development. I can't wait to see what happens to it. I know we're a year away from it, but this is where I think this this whole thing is going. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then what Machinima becomes from that will be really interesting to yeah. see once these films start to get into that um, space, which they are doing right now. Then the other one that I wanted to share with you is um, this really interesting one called Harold Halibut. <laughs> this is a this is what you call a handcrafted game. Now, I don't know if you've seen this one at all. Um, it's actually I, I've seen it prior to like I uh, I've seen seen the the trailer that you released here, but I've seen this somewhere before. Oh. I thought I thought that we had discussed it on here, but I don't think we have. No, so we hadn't. Yeah, I have seen mind. this before. It's a oh, fascinating aesthetic. This game. Yeah, well, it's stop mo animation, mm -hmm. which um, it, you know to, to create it using stop mo animation is it's just absolutely uh, well unique. I think I, I haven't really seen a game being created in this kind of way. Fourteen years in the making. That's another sort of interesting aspect to it um i can't wait to see machinima being made in this because it looks it looks beautiful and interesting and the story world just looks i don't know there's, there's just something kind of friendly about it i don't know whether folks can do much with that sort of aesthetic these days they don't seem to be inspired so much in that way but it just looks so interesting to me it's actually a, a game about friendship on this kind of city-sized um ship uh, a spaceship arc or whatever um and the quest in the game is to find the meaning of home which is you know hmm. couldn't be any more kind of apple pie but i bet there's some really interesting shorts that kind of come out of it either you know, twisting it in some way or spicing it up or or just, you know, extending the kind of characters that seem to be so um, embedded within it. It just looks really fascinating, I think. Um, and I can't wait to see what folks do with this one either. Um, so there you go. So and that literally just look. So the, so the trailer that I shared with you was launched um, several weeks, several weeks back. But the game itself has literally just launched. Um, as oh, it has. Okay. Record. So mid mid April it, it launched. Um, so it's yeah. I must there. have seen the trailer when it first when it first came out. It looks like yeah. it came out in November. Yeah, that's right. Um, but, it, but the game's yeah. there. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Really I did, interesting. I did try and see if I could find anything. Um, you know, any trailers, any um, machinimas that folks have made with it yet? But I think I, you know, it's probably going to be quite a niche one. Um, sure. But I. I, I'm looking forward to that one. I think it will be quite intriguing. Um, I've got a few other things. Do, do, you, do you want to carry on for a little bit? I've got a few. Yeah, sure. Things. Well, I um, I saw some really interesting projects that I'd like to share. These are not actually machinima, but my God, they're so interesting. And I think you commented on, those, on them as well, Phil. I think I saw you comment on them. The first one was the... Um, Black Milk Studio has created oh. this kind of stunning series of <laughs> yeah, really fascinating, unrelated shorts in this sci-fi anthology. Um, and it and as I understand it, what they're trying to do is explore the past, present, and future of humanity. And I thought it was a little bit black mirrorish. It's called A Thousand Suns. Uh, I know you picked up on the first one, Ice. I watched uh, all of them, yeah. Did you, you've watched them all, have you? I haven't all seen them all them. yet, but my God, I thought they were amazing. I was fascinated, actually, by the, um, the last one, the the Disney one. The, yeah. What do they call it? In Loving Memory. Tomorrowland or something like that, yeah. Well, 
well, no, Demaraland. That was uh, that was the Banksy uh, Disney. Uh, uh, that's a that's no a... Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland is episode six. Of, oh, okay. Of, oh, I thought you were referring yeah. to. I thought you were referring to the Banksy installation on one of the beaches in England a couple of years back, which looked just like that. <laughs> uh, which is fascinating. Um, but it's it's I think it's really interesting. They've used a bunch of creative technologies to create the aesthetic, but it's basically real life, uh, real life acting performances. So they've used 3D printing, 3D scanning and, and mocap and whatnot. But it, but it is kind of real life performances that they've they've done with it. But, oh, there's more live action to this than you would believe. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's though, actually it? quite astonishing. I, I when I commented on it over on X. Uh, my first question was, and my first assumption was, well, there's got to be Unreal Engine involved here. Yeah, but not. <laughs> it's not, like at all. Yeah. Like it's most mostly live action. And the, yeah, there's some CGI. And they're being really kind of, they're keeping their cards close to their chest as far as what, what specifically they use for CGI. But I mean, it's got to be one of these top tier tools like, I don't know, Cinema 4D or, uh, you know, one of those high end ones like that. But what was surprising to me was how much yeah. of this was practical effects, how much of it was on on location. Um, yeah, you know, and yeah, the 3D printing thing is particularly intriguing. The, the very first episode, there's a guy who uh, spends the whole episode in a spacesuit. That spacesuit was 3D printed. Yeah. The guy, the, the the filmmaker, 3D printed it in his apartment, painted it the parts in his apartment. Put it all together and remarked on the fact that, uh, you know, I wish I had known prior to this that uh, the super glue uh, <laughs> disintegrates once the temperature gets low enough because one of the cold scenes that they showed was on location somewhere really cold. Iceland. <laughs> Amazing. Isn't it Amazing. incredible? Yeah. But so, uh, and there's many more episodes uh, to come. Yeah, they have well, many, many, many planned, like dozens. So it's a very exciting development. I'm really fascinated to see that. I should definitely. Well, we've we've subscribed to it. Our channel has subscribed to it, so we'll see. Yeah, what happens? But it's not machinima at all. It's just not at all. It's kind and of it's, like a machinima approach, though, to real filmmaking. Oh, I, I, that's you couldn't put it any more perfectly than that. That's exactly right. Yeah, this is. And, and it's and it has an astoundingly high budget look. Yeah, but and but it, it is not. It is not high budget. Yeah, it's brilliant. So there you go. That's that's fascinating. Yeah. The next one I wanted to share with you is probably what we would call my cinema with AI, and it and this these, these just have cracked me up. These are a whole series of films by a studio called Abandoned Films. And the one that I wanted to share with you is a Star Wars 1950s Super Panavision 70 style short made with generative AI tools, including the script. Where are these coming? I've been seeing these all over. My and God, they are hilarious. Where are they coming from? It's an amazing, well, just a, just was... a really bizarre look. And it, who yeah. thought of this? It's just wonderful. It is I saw, hilarious. I didn't... Watch it, but it was Alien made as a 1950s. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. That's, that's the that's the series. Yeah, that's yeah. the there's, same guys. There's somebody doing this same thing on Instagram right now with oh. music. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, and so basically, they're the 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 primary artist is uh, uh an album cover artist guy, and he does use AI in some of his work. And he takes commissions and you can specify whether or not you want AI art used in the work or not. So he can do it either way. But then they're they're advertising this, basically advertising this artwork with these songs that are that are absolute homage to old style of music, like 50s and 60s, old pop music, but with Absurd and frankly, sometimes over the top, modern, often R-rated lyrics. <laughs> it's it's, it's just hysterically funny. Well, 
it's a kind so, of style transfer. But you know the big, the big, yeah, 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 yeah. That's I mean, a great term for it. Well, the, I don't know. Would the content that they're using the 1950s would that be out of copyright? I don't think it would be, would it? Because when you look at the images, they are the you know you can for a second see the original film. Uh, you know the old film, the 1950s film in it. You can see you can for a second see, for example, um, uh, who who was um, what was John Wayne's son called? The, D- David D- David Wayne was it the one that did all the um, you know the the the. Uh, you know the 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 kind of forums, oh boy. Jura- Jurassic Park sort of not stuff. my not my area. Oh yeah, well, Ricky whatever. Would know. But you can yeah. see, you can see it's him, and you can see some of the the nineteen fifties um, female characters, like like Elizabeth Taylor and all of that kind right. of stuff. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of the content that's probably been it's probably skirting the line of of. Yeah, I would say it's been fed into yeah. something and then style transferred out, probably sure. using. Something like runway, maybe, because that's one of the things that that could do, wasn't it? Style transfer. Interesting. Oh but, yeah, that Mid Journey and Runway are definitely involved in these. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, it's video, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive the uh, yeah the style. Yeah, so brilliant. But you know, like I said, I I, I saw Jurassic Park, Terminator, Transformers, Blade Runner, and I think it's, they've got to be using something like Eleven Labs for the voices too. You think? Possibly, yeah. Very yeah, possible. some well, kind of synthesis like that has got to be involved. I'm amazed there's a whole channel on it, though, because, I mean, I would have thought yeah. the stuff had been taken oh, out. Yeah, but... there's apparently a real appetite for them. I haven't dug into who these guys are, though. So, I mean, I'm just saying that have you seen it? It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, at, a, at a level, it's, it's interesting and fun. Anyway, then the other one that I wanted to highlight, because I'm kind of intrigued by this guy's approach is an uh it's a film project not again not machinima well po- probably not machinima um it's called vikings and aliens and he's using he's using kickstarter to generate his funding and he's trying to raise 85 and a half thousand pounds um Whoa. Uh, yeah to to make this film um and so far he's got almost a thousand pounds from 12 backers and he's only got 12 days to go um and and that will probably by the time time we get this out there'll probably be like one day to go or something um now he's posted a really interesting video about it uh they are using unreal engine in it um but this creator is he's a you know he's a director he's clearly uh you know has clearly got Viking heritage in him. Um, and he basically wants to tell a story that's kind of much closer to the the traditional heritage of Viking culture. Um, and I hope he gets there because having looked at what he's produced, it really is very interesting. You know, he's the aliens are not, I don't I don't quite know what he means by alien. He's he said that it's it it's not what what you might immediately think of. So I'm guessing, you know, alien might mean alien as in the sense of illegal alien means in in the US kind of thing. I'm guessing there's an element of that in it. Um but I think he's picked the wrong funding strategy for it somehow. I mean, Kickstarter, people giving 10 and 20 quid here and there. He's never going to reach eighty five thousand doing that, in in my view, unless this goes viral, unless it reaches many more people than it has. He clearly seems to have kind of abandoned that kind of approach in terms of the promotion of it, because I saw it a couple of weeks ago, which is when I dropped it onto our board, and I haven't really seen it since. I'll be really disappointed for him if he doesn't manage to raise the funding for it, or at least if he can think about another way of doing it that sort of gets in there with less money. I don't know quite quite why he thinks he needs so much to make it. But um yeah, I kind of wanted to raise that one too because it's it's an ambitious project that I suspect will fail just at this hurdle, which will be such Yeah, that's a, shame. a that's a that's a really uh that's a challenging number to hit. It is, isn't it? I, I mean yeah. why so much? I'm not really sure. Um maybe he's I don't know again, I didn't look him up too too much. I mean that's a reasonable budget for a you know, for a film, uh, but it's just, that's a big ask. 
if you don't have an already, if if he had an already established fan base that was big and and stuff like that, then then maybe. But it 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 kind of feels like it's they're starting from zero, you know, yeah. in that regard. And man, oh man, it's so hard to generate buzz um, for something new. It's not leaning on anyone else's existing IP. Um, it doesn't appear to. So yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, well, they're they're probably going to have to to retool and 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 think about it differently on how to how to get yeah. it done. Yeah, and I hope they do yeah. that, or at least I I hope they find another type of um, uh, funding strategy for it. Because yes, I, it looks to me like a great um, concept. Um, yeah, but I I've seen that. Kickstarter work for film projects. Um, have you? Yeah, I have, but it's not it's not it's not the usual story, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's there, there are exceptions, uh, the ones that, that do succeed with it. So it's, it's not unthinkable, but yeah, you gotta have a real, you gotta have a real marketing endeavor behind that. Just putting it on kickstart is not going to get it any inherent attention at all. Mm -hmm. There has to be a lot of push and again, like I said, not starting from zero on fan base helps a lot, you know, mm -hmm. that you've already got maybe a mailing list or someone that you've put together that that's already been supporting you in other ways over the years. And now here we are. Finally, we're here. Boom. And I, I just have to assume that they don't have that uh, mm -hmm. with, you know, such a big ask and they've got 12 or 13 supporters. So that that just simply means that they're 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 probably hitting this a little too early, you know, mm -hmm. in, in their life cycle as uh, for, for a fan base. It, it's, it, it requires so much work to build those. Yeah. But wishing them, I wish them well. luck. Yeah. yeah me too. Me too. too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the only other things I wanted to mention, well, you know, rooster teeth story. Uh, I, I had an email cause I'm, I'm sort of subscribed, um, have been for years. Um, that uh, what they said in their last email to me was the that from mid April there would be no new subscriber content, uh, and that its website and apps would be shut down from the fifteenth of May. Uh, I've got to say it's not one hundred percent clear what that means for their content. So there's obviously more to come on this one. Um, the only other thing that I saw these guys do was a, a you know the, the, they did a let's play halo for the last time vid for old time's sake kind of thing um the four of them that that were part of the core team uh can't say i watched it but it it you know it looked like a bit of a sad story to be honest um i'm seeing their uh or at least i think i'm seeing their um the red versus blue restoration is that what it was called yes i think i'm seeing that on amazon but i'm not sure if it's yes that's where it's it, uh, has it actually been released I didn't think it was going to be released until... It, sometimes the, Amazon shows a title that's like, you know, not up. there yet. It's just to alert yeah. you to it. So that Fifth could be what I've been seeing. Fifth or May, I thought. I haven't even tried to watch it. So no, no, no sure. neither have I. But, I mean, the, the, my point really is what's going to happen to all the content. And, you know, bearing in mind mm. what we said last time about what the community are up to, I think this is... Yeah, the, yeah, that's interesting. Still quite an interesting one. And then the very final thing I want to just sort of mention is... Um, that Fantasy Fair Second Life Film Festival has been running, which is led by Chantel Harvey and Safia Widdishins. Um, and by the time the set goes out, it will have already um, run its course. It ran between the 24th of April and the 6th of May. And unfortunately, I didn't really get in any time to sort of drop into the program. I don't know if you guys did. Um, but it kind of I crept am... up on me. Yeah, well, I'm fairly certain there'll be some pretty astonishing Second Life films being shown in there. Um, and uh, I, I kind of look forward to catching up with what they've been doing, actually, um, through whatever Chantel and um, Safia put out. I did notice one of the awards, though, was for um, a really well-known um, Second Life machinimator uh, called Lap... Well, I can never remember his name, but the, I mean, mm -hmm. folks used to call him Lap, but Lapiskin Liberty... Who oh, passed, okay. uh, passed away recently? I oh, I didn't yeah. didn't actually know that that had happened. Um, Me neither. No, um, Chantel reminded us of, of the work that he did, and I have to say, I do recall in the very early days he ran a channel which um, hosted actually the European 
uh, Machinima Film Festival that I directed in 2007. Um, and he he ran a channel called A View TV, um, which I think streamed quite a lot of our content at the time. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure that that's um, a very moving tribute to 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 Lap. Um, and I was really sorry to hear that kind of news. Um, so I would suggest that uh, I don't know if Chantelle is is planning a YouTube series for this year's festival, or whether uh, the individual creators are just um, you know posting their own films. But what I will do is endeavour to check out what it is she's doing with the content and make sure that that's on our show notes because I know she's as we are recording at this moment in time in the midst of her festival I won't bother her until the festival <laughs> just to double yeah. check what she's up to but we wish them all the best in the in that in that festival so that's it that's my news done this month a heap of stuff thank you that's all that's all <laughs> yeah nothing else nothing else that I picked up anyway <laughs> well great uh Again, I'll, I'll uh, uh, bookend this again with a reminder of how to get in touch with us. If you've got comments on any of the news we've discussed here, or you've got uh, some hot tips for us on, on stuff that's going on or some insights that we may have uh, missed or glossed over, uh, be sure to reach out to us either through the comments or through email, talk at completelymachinima.com. Thanks for joining us. And we will, uh, for, on behalf of myself and Tracy and Damien, and Ricky, who is probably all shriveled up like a prune from his skinny dipping. <laughs> uh, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Anyway, so the next one I wanted to talk can, about. Uh, can we? I need to take a quick bathroom break. So just carry on without me because I can <laughs> listen to this later. Okay. Yeah. But I will mute. So thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs>